Ready? Look at that. All I need now is eating. Howdy folks, this is Justro at Metcalf Mills. Today I've got that power cannon video up for you. Really enjoyed doing this. It's nice to share time in the kitchen with you and doing something sweet. Something I wanted to say about this video. Uh, make sure I didn't include the footage of rinsing off the pears. Make sure you do that. And I noted on the video when to do that before you put them in to cook. And also... I've done a lot of canning, and sometimes I don't wipe the rim of the jar off after I take the funnel out. When I get done filling the jar up and take the funnel out, I don't always wipe that rim off. I kind of pay attention to what I'm doing, and if nothing gets on that rim, sometimes I don't wipe it off. I don't ever have anything not seal. Certain things like meat and different things like that, I always wipe wipe the rim off but i would advise you to take a paper towel or a cloth and wipe that rim off and dry it real good and make sure there's nothing on it that would keep your jars from not sealing i've just done it so much i'm used to sometimes not doing it and i didn't think about doing that when i was doing it but it's important and i wanted you to know that now let's get in here in the kitchen and get these pears ready and can them What I'm doing here is I'm picking out the pears that are just a little bit soft. They're not rock hard. They're just a teeny bit, just starting to get soft. We don't want them real hard because they won't be as good after they're canned if they're too hard. So I'm picking out the ones that's just very, just starting to turn soft. Got a little bit of softness to them. And that way when they can, they'll be a lot better. But you want to use hard pears for canning. Because if you use soft pears, I mean after they get real soft, they'll just cook into mush. So you want a fairly firm pair to can it. And what I'm saying is soft means that they're a little just starting to get soft, just a little bit. Or they'll still be good. See that in there's almost too soft because it's turning yellow. Some of these are going to be probably too little anyway, but just got a bucket of hard ones here. So the ones that are just starting to get a little bit soft, I mean, you can just barely feel it. Them are the ones that we'll can first. And then we'll come back in a day or two to these other ones after they start softening up just a little bit. You don't want to squeeze them too hard because you'll bruise them. You just kind of feel it on them just a little bit for see how soft they're getting. When you're picking them and they're up in the tree, you can pull on them with that picker a little bit. And you might be able to tell some of them I pulled on didn't want to turn loose of the tree, so I left them up there to ripen on up a little bit. But a lot of the times you'll pick some that's still pretty hard. And when that happens, you just hold them till they soften up some. 
That's a way to deal with that. But. Look at there how golden yellow they get when they get ripe. Now that's too soft to can. Before I make pear butter out of that, somebody commented a recipe for pear butter, so I'm excited about trying that out. That's what I'm gonna do, just go through all these and pick out the soft ones. And the ones that's starting to get soft. Boy, you get them like that where they're turning good and golden, yellow colored. They'll melt in your mouth. They are so good. Like I said, you don't have to squeeze them hard to bruise them trying to tell if they're soft. You can tell just by putting a little bit of pressure on them how they are. When they're real hard you can't hardly peel them when they're real hard but when they get golden color boy it whoop, about peel them with a screwdriver or something they peel easy after they get thank you Jane. Mm -hmm. after they get real ripe that peeling will just about fall off and they will absolutely melt in your mouth and a lot of people's ask, I'm pretty sure these are Bartlett pears. I think that's what, if I remember right, that's what they are. Well, it's, I may, these ones that's real little, I may wait on, just do the bigger ones. And then come back and do the smaller ones, depending on how much we want to do total. All right, so what we got here, these are our uh, pears that's starting to get soft, and these over here are still green. So these over here is what we're going to work on. We're going to use this big old peas peeler right here to do the work. It's going to be fun. I know y'all are going to enjoy seeing this fine piece of equipment work. So right here... We've got our pears in the sink, and what I'm doing, you see how this has got some dried leaf on it? it just looks dirty. We're soaking these things and washing them. I'm not scrubbing them now. I'm just letting them soak and moving them around just to rinse them off real good before we pe peel them. I just want to get the stuff that might flake off when we're peeling them and get the pears dirty. Get all that loose junk off of the skins. And then I'm going to rinse them over here after I get stuff kind of soaked off. I'm going to give them a good rinse over here on this side. But you can see that water. See how dingy it is? There's a lot of junk coming off of these and that junk if you don't rinse them real good is going to be right in with your pears because when you peel them it's just going to get all over them so we don't want that do we so what i'm doing you know after we graded the pears what's more ripe and what's not i'm still even with putting them in the sink to wash 
I'm still going through and separating again. So, you know, we graded them yesterday. I let them ripen a little bit overnight. And I'm going through again, and the ones that are more ripe get washed to be put up. And the ones that are more on the green side, or not green, but more hard like that. See how that is? I'm putting them over here in another bucket. And that way, what is most ripe will be canned first. And what is not as ripe will be canned later and it'll have time to ripen up a little bit so that's why we're doing that ensure we get the ripest of the ripe in the jars that we're canning because we want them to be the best they can don't we yeah, we do. Doing all this work. Yeah. So I'm going to let these over here soak. And these that I've already rinsed, I'm going to just break all the stems off. Because them ain't going to do nothing but cause problems when we start peeling. So we're going to break all them stems off. Throw them over here in the scrap bowl. Compost bucket, whatever you got. Get all the stems off of these babies. If we don't, when they go through that peeler, they'll be breaking off and flopping around, and we might bite down on one this winter. You never know. But we won't, because we're going to get them off. Tell you what, we got a load of pears here. I hope we get to can some peaches, too. Man, we got some... Look here at these peaches I picked the other day off this little volunteer tree. See how big that is? Look. Monster. But see, I didn't spray them, and they got some bad spots. Of course, they're getting ripe, but most of them, the, the worms got in them and ruined them. Just ruined them. But if I had treated them peach trees, we would have had bukus of big old beautiful peaches. I mean, that's big. And beautiful, but they just had them old worms in them that bores holes through there and messes them up. And man, I tell you, it's a heartbreaker. I... But this year's been off all the way around. Me getting sick back in the winter, and I'm still don't have my wind back. Just messed up the whole year getting started and farming and like that when you get behind you're always behind you can't ever get caught up so it's you know you're planted a lot of my stuff late planted the cucumbers late and they got some kind of a blight or something i just got a few off of them and the vines just went just got real bad but anyway we're blessed with so many other things i ain't gonna complain about nothing All right, I've got 12 cups of water right here. And the light syrup that we're going to use canning these pears, it's going to be a 4 to 1 ratio, 1 cup of sugar to 4 cups of water. So i got 12 cups here of water. I'm going to put in 3 cups of sugar. Now the sugar that I chose to use on this is this Zulka Morena pure cane sugar it's not white sugar it's it's uh i guess less unrefined we try to stay away from just pure white sugar i don't know how much better this is but it feels better using it so can make all different types of syrup i just like the light syrup less sugar in it but 
And we probably ain't gonna be drinking the juice, so. Well, the girls might, but I won't. You can make light syrup, heavy syrup, medium syrup, ultra light syrup, whatever you want. That's all in the bottle blue book of Canon if you need the recipes for it. We're gonna stir this up. I don't have any heat on it just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on a little bit of heat to help that sugar to melt when it warms up. Time we get our peeling done and everything, it should be melted and ready to go. Ready for peeling, Junior? All right, folks, what I've got here is 12 cups of warm water and I got some Canon pickling salt over here. And the way mother done this on when she is peeling apples to make applesauce, she always peeled them all by hand. She didn't have no peeler. But she always made a salt water solution. And that will keep your apples and pears from turning brown for a long time. You can soak them in there, they say, for 10 minutes and take them out of the water and even rinse the salt off of them and they will still not turn brown for a long time. So it's a good way. It's what we've always done. And I can remember when I was a little boy, mother would be peeling apples and she'd put them straight into that salt water to keep them from turning brown until she made the applesauce or canned them or whatever she was doing with them, cooking with them. And I remember I'd run up there and stick my little pile down in that salt water and get me one of them apples, and it was salty, and man, it was so good. So the ratio we're going to do is one half a teaspoon per cup of water. So we got 12 cups of water, so what that equals to is six teaspoons. One, two, three four, five, six. Stir that up, melt that salt. And I use Canon pickling salt. You can use kosher salt. I wouldn't want to use table salt with iodide in it. Never use that for any kind of preserving curing meat, nothing. Always make sure you got plain salt, kosher salt, or canning pickling salt. So that salt's pretty much already melted. I don't hear any scraping around and I can't see any. That's ready for our fruit now. So these are the apples here that I peeled to demonstrate for the Fun Fact Friday video, the peeler working. And I'm just gonna clean these up Take the peeling that the peeler didn't get, uh, any bruises on them where they fell off the tree. I'm gonna cut all that out, clean them up real good. And they've already turned a little brown because I didn't get them in the salt water real quick. But instead of wasting these apples that I demonstrated the peeler on, these are rusty sweet is the variety, rusty sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and Put these in the salt water and can them right along with the pears we're getting ready to can. And I'm going to see how they do. Sometimes that rusty sweet tree is loaded down with apples. I'd like to know if they, you know, how they can up. I don't remember mother or anybody ever talking about it. So that's going to be interesting to find out. And this is a perfect opportunity to find out while I'm in the middle of doing these other things. Get these all cleaned up here. turn real brown. I'm going to make sure I can get all that off. Any bruised spots. That didn't even really get bruised when it fell off the tree. 
Cut it open so I can see how the what the core situation is. That core was almost took out clean, so clean out the little teensy bit here. Now normally I'd put these straight into the salt water, but I'm I'm gonna rinse them off before I put them into that salt water where our pears are going. So that's why I'm putting them back here by themselves right now. But and it's not like I'm too concerned with them turning brown because this is just an experiment to see how these rusties and it's not a whole big batch it's to see how these rusties do getting canned so we'll know you know in the future how they do being canned and also if you can't there's things you can do like with tomatoes and apples and pears if you want to just can apples like halves or quarters well but you'd like to have some apple sauce well can your apples in halves or quarters and you can always make the apple sauce when you open the jar so that's a good way or if you want to use your apples for pies or whatever you got the option to do that because you've left your apples uh, in whole, whole or pieces, so. It gives you options, and I like to have options when I'm doing different things. All right. These are pretty hard apples, like winter apples. You know, made for keeping in an apple house. So, they should cook good and make good applesauce or fried apples or canned apples or whatever you want. I would think. So. Two, I never spray them with anything. So, if they get a bug bite on them or something, I just cut it out and go on. I'm excited to try these. You know, that tree's been down there all my life. It's, I don't know how old, 40, 50 years old probably. And it's getting, it's not looking the best like some of them apple trees. I, I should hope this winter to get some grafts off of them and get some new starts because I don't want to lose them. I don't know where any others are that variety. So that's my plan. So there they are. Like I said, I'm going to wash them, clean them up, put them in the salt water. That power I demonstrated, if you, if you watch Fun Fact Friday, I cleaned it up. You can see how neat it looks, no core. I'm going to put it in the salt water too stir them around to get them all sawed all over them. I'm going to soak these apples for 10 minutes in this salt water and I'm going to put them in a different bowl because I don't want them mixed in with the pears. Our sugar is pretty much all dissolved for our light syrup. So that's ready to have some pears. So these pears have been soaking in this water for a while now. I'm gonna should have everything loosened up and soaked good. So I'm gonna scrub them a little bit. 
put them over here on the other side to be rinsed off and I'm gonna go ahead and break the stems off as I'm doing this because it's a lot easier to do it that way than it is to do it after you get them piled over here on the other side of the sink don't have to worry about it then so scrub them real good get any kind of scum or anything off of them from just being outside in the weather there's so much stuff in the air everything gets i try to wash everything I, I used to, we never washed our green beans before we canned them, and this time I, we strung the beans, got the strings off, and then we brought them over here to the sink and washed big piles of them at a time, and put them over on the other side of the sink to drain, and then we would break them right out of the sink and put them in a bowl on the side of the sink here to go right into the jar. So they got washed real good before they got canned. We used to never do that, but anymore, I feel like it's a real good idea to do it. We used to just, well, I say we didn't, but what we used to do was string them, break them, then wash them, and then put them in the jar. But if, you're, if you've got beans that's broke and they're in that nasty water, that's gonna get inside the beans. I mean, it may never hurt you, but I just like to eat as clean as I can, so that's why I do it. Can't be, I guess, too careful this day and time. There's a lot of chemicals in the air getting sprayed and just in the rain and just all kinds of junk, so. We're gonna clean it up as best we can before we put it in our canning jar. Fixing fruit has always been a big thing in the mountains where you was making applesauce or canning apples or making out fried apple pies. Man, that's a good idea. I might have to look into that a little closer here in the near future. Because it's right now apple season in the mountains. Apples are getting ripe and it's that time of year. And apple butter... And it's always a big thing. I mean, people get out in the yard a lot of times and they'd sit down with a bushel of apples and a knife and they'd sit there and peel them and put them in a big pot. When they got done, they'd build a fire in the pot, under the, build a fire under the pot and cook them apples and stir them all day long and make apple butter cooked on a fire. And it's... It's just a tradition. I love it. I love apple butter. I can eat it with a spoon by itself or with somebody else, either one. You know, I can eat it either way, by myself or with somebody. That's really the only two ways to eat apple butter is by yourself or with somebody. But you have to be careful and not get stingy or you'll find yourself eating it by yourself more than you're eating it with somebody else so that's how apple butter works you have to have a big heart to handle the responsibility of having apple butter because it's one of them things it would be easy to be stingy with unless you got a big heart and like little tree's grandma said if you got something good, you're supposed to share it. And apple butter is sure something good. I miss being in the kitchen. We ain't been in here in a long time. I've been talking about it, telling you that, but I ain't got my butt in here. Been a lot going on this year and different factors. And anyway, we're in the kitchen. I'm happy about it. Glad I can share it with you. We'll be in here more. We still got to make that squash pie, which y'all could have used that earlier on when squash was coming in good. But 
if your squash is already gone, you can't get your hands on no more, you'll have it for next year anyway, won't you? You gotta make harmony sometime too. I may have to wait at this point to get some fresh corn for that because I have made it out of corn that was held over from last year. And it didn't do as good. It just didn't swell up like it's supposed to. So we may wait till some of that Hickory King gets ready and do it at that time. So if you can get your hands on some Hickory King corn, different kinds of corn will work. I, I've never tried nothing but Hickory King, but if you can get some good hard field corn, you should be able to make some kind of harmony out of it. What I like about that Hickory King is the stuff swells up so big, it'll triple in size. If you start out cooking a pot full of it, you'll have three pots time you get done. And oh man, you talk about good eating. Oh yeah. We got a nice pile of pears right here, folks. I can't wait to get them in the jar. Got all these ripe ones up here that are too ripe to we probably can. We might try to make some pear butter out of them if we have time. I'm talking about that and some kind person left a kind of a little ideal recipe in one of the comments. I think I pinned it to the top of that video. If you go down in the comment section, I'm pretty sure I pinned uh, what they said about how to make pear butter and something else I was talking about doing with it. It's right there, so. Almost done. Some of these little old pears are tiny. We'll put them on that peeler and see what it does. The core may take more out of them than we want. Or we may just peel them with a knife. But we'll get them one way or another. Now, look how that dingy that water is now. Look how dingy. That's not going in our jars. That old dingy water is going down the sink, down the drain. All right, I'm getting the ranch pears out of the sink to get ready to peel. And I'm a third time picking out the most ripest out of the bunch because, you know, if we make a run and it takes us a while to get ready for another run, I want to get them canned. I don't want to have some that goes bad from sitting around too long, gets too, too ripe to can. You never know what's going to happen. I'm, if you're going to get them all done right at this minute or not, I like to stay on things till I get them done, but... Sometimes you just can't, and today may be one of them times, but I'm picking out the ripest for the third time now. So, picking out the nice yellow looking ones. We'll can them first, and then these others. Well, the, uh, the ones that's less ripe will have more time to get ripe. And the ones that's closer to being ripe won't get too ripe. That may be too meticulous for you, but that's all right if it is. You don't have to do that. That's just, I'm just sharing with you what how I do it and the pains I take and, you know, I, it's, my, it's our food and I just like to do my very best with it. And there's a lot of little details. The problem... With, with important details is people say, well, you know, we don't need to do that. There ain't no use of doing that extra step. And the first thing you know, you'll have something that's not as good as it was. And that's, that's what I don't want to happen. I want this to be the best it can be because we're going to be eating it, my girls. I want them to have the best canned pears that they can have. So that's why we take these pains and do this but all right there's the most ripest ones we're gonna set them over here our setup is i've got our pears sitting right here this is not enough room for me to back the camera up to get things like it needs to be here but 
we got the pair sitting right down here in front of us the peeling bucket is right underneath where the peeler is going to come off we got a pan here in case they fall on the counter and we've got a our salt water over here as soon as we peel them virginia is going to pick them up put them right directly in the salt water so they won't turn brown when we get a bowl full and the salt water peeled we'll as we take them out of the salt water we'll be standing there with a knife and clean them up slice them up how we want them rinse them off put them right into our our light syrup to start cooking All right, Junior. So what we're gonna do, put a pair on here, centered as we can, as straight with the core as we can. And I'll just drop the peelings off right in the peeling bucket down here. Virginia, you catch the pair when it comes off there. There you go. And them cores we'll put right down in the peeling bucket with the peels so the chickens can have them a big time here after a while. Thing, probably getting the, the core centered just right but it ain't no big deal you can always now that pair there is pretty soft so let's see how it does nope spun out that's what I was telling you I'm glad it done that so y'all could see what I was talking about the pair is too soft we can fix it with a knife if it's too soft to, to do what it needs to do are we still gonna cook that one we might I don't want to run. We might just eat it. Okay. That core's come out. Yeah. Virginia's got her rhythm down. She knows exactly now where to hold her hand to catch that pair when it comes off. something with it because that's just how fast they ripen up so they, they ripen since i put them here in the sink Ooh. that one there is super ripe so that's why i, I pick through them like i showed you there to, to make sure they That's what I was talking about. I'm going to go ahead. And sprinkle some more salt over them. Because I'm going to add a little bit more water to this. To make sure they're all down underneath it good. Just 
just going to pour the water in the edge here to bring the water level up and not wash the salt off that I just sprinkled over the pair. So it'll kind of stay in place. And dissolve on them pears. And what we do is just, you know, as they soak, you'll just turn them over. And so the whole pear gets treated. Now these pears that was too ripe, I'm just going to take my knife and clean them up. Finish peeling them, what the peeler wouldn't do. Clean them up, get them in salt water. So that we can... We'll go ahead and can them if they, if they get mushy. We'll just use them for something else pie filling or something and then bad spots don't mean anything but all a bad spot means is it needs a knife took to it. So, split them babies open. Clean that core out what's left. Do you want me to take a knife and clean up some of these that's already in the salt water? You can just let them soak for now. Because what I want to do is take them out and clean them up. Rinse them off and put them right in the syrup. Okay. That's, that's my plan. Okay, well I was just thinking just like because... Yeah, we'll just let them soak in there for a little while. All right. Good thinking, Virginia. Yeah, I was just going to do it just so like we wouldn't have as many when we got to that step. Just because I didn't have to take them right now. Yeah, they have to be ranched before we put them in the syrup, so... And take them out and clean them up and put them back in the salt water. Yeah, and then we could just get it out and rinse it and stick it in and it would already be cleaned up. That'd be alright. Is this knife right here clean? Uh huh. Ready to go. So Virginia is going to start cleaning up the ones over here that we peeled with a peeler. She's going to take them out clean them up and put them right back in the salt water until we're ready to rinse them and put them in the to cook put them on to cook I guess quarters is the best, Virginia. Okay, I wouldn't really cut them up much right now. but uh, If you don't now, we'll have to do it later. Okay. So, which it wouldn't be a big deal to reach in there and get one out and cut it up. But if you got it in your hand, we might as well do it now. I didn't, we didn't talk cut about all that, the I'm sorry. Out, right? Yeah, get the bruise out. I figured I was just thinking for Yeah. I'm just gonna put our jars in the oven. 
to warm up. That's on low 170 degrees. See how many of our pears we can put in our syrup here. Some of these broke up just from being tender and little. That's all right. That'll fill in the gaps. Some of them come out to about perfect halves. The ball book said cooking a single layer I don't know why but I don't remember us ever doing that so that's I'll leave that up to you ain't gonna go too much but main thing you want to remember right now is just don't drop the pears I don't want you to mess your pears up if you go by this video. I don't want to mislead you in any way, so I'd advise you to rinse off, wrench the salt off of your pears before you put them in your, before you put them in your light syrup. You can see how pretty and white they stayed. See how pretty and white they stayed in that salt water, just as white as snow. And we got them both heating up. We're gonna bring them to a cook for, it says five to six minutes. And then we're gonna take them out, put them in our hot jars, put the light syrup in with them, put the lids on, Put them in the water bath. We got one pot of cooking good right here, and we're going to cook them about five minutes. Since they're not in a single layer, I've just been got my wooden spoon here. I just been flopping them around, changing position with them. So they can get a good even cook on them. I like to use a wooden spoon on things like this because it won't cool you you cooking down like a metal spoon will. Metal spoon will take a lot of the heat out of what you're stirring, but until it gets heated up, but a wooden spoon won't do that so bad. Too, with having pieces you can always you've always got something to fill in with fill in the gaps so that works real good put a big half right on top here to finish it off oh yeah just right and now back in there. We're going to get our light syrup. That right there, one cup. 
one cup was just about enough to fill that jar up. A little more than one cup, but not much more. Get it up over our fruit. Up to the shoulder, no higher. Our lid. On our, I think about just finger tight, like they say, put three fingers on there and tighten as much as you can, that's about right. I'm going to set these right on over in the canner where they'll stay warm. Alright. Serpy, serpy. finger tight. Right. Set them right over in the can. These are still pretty firm so I figure it's time we Water bath them 25 minutes. They should be good. Don't worry about heating my lids because they're going to get water bath anyway, so I just wash them in hot water and let that be good enough. come out with about the right amount of fruit for our seven jars I didn't I didn't do anything other than just a, a little quick think about it before I done it which was a very was a very short think about it before I done it so. tell you something that's real important too a minute ago and this is one thing that you never want to forget to do when you're working in the kitchen and canning. I didn't show y'all on camera a minute ago, but one thing you for sure don't want to forget to do is this. And that is, put your funnel in the jar, of course, but... What I was saying is, Virginia made us a pot of coffee and we sat down and had a little afternoon, co or um, barely afternoon coffee snack. And that's something you really never want to forget to do. When you got time, you need to take you a little break from what you're doing and rest a minute. Don't ever forget to take you a little afternoon coffee snack if you indulge if you don't have to get you some kool-aid or something i think it's gonna be just right folks they're pretty close to just right now three finger tight wipe the Sticky off of it, put it in the canner. All right. Made a big old batch of light syrup, so we got plenty for our next round. Make sure you don't underdo, because if you get the cannon and you run out of syrup or brine or something it's a pain in the bottom when that happens
Now you can already have your water heated and hot. I just like doing it this way because I can get my water right up over the top of them just like I want it. Amount of water, no guessing. If you do it enough, you, you know how much to put. But I don't water bath a whole lot. And mother ain't here to ask, so. There we go. All right, folks, we got them heating. Put this old water bath canner lid on there to keep it covered up. Now we're gonna water bath these things for 25 minutes after they start boiling. You hear that? Starting to boil. We're gonna set our timer for 25 minutes. Folks, there's what we got. Power halves and power quarters. All they need now is eating. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this power cannon video. I did enjoy doing it. Can't, and I'll even enjoy it more when I'm opening them jars up. We are this winter when the snow's blowing and eating them sweet, fresh pears that growed out here on this pear tree. That's a, re that's a reward right there. A reward for your labor. And we know what's in them. We know what ain't in them. Because we done it ourselves. I noted on the video, there's a link down in the description if you want to see my peas peeler, peeler, that peeling machine I used. <clears throat> there's a link down in the description right below this video and you can click on that link, and you can see this peeler up close and personal, exactly how it works, the mechanics of it, and all that in detail. It's one of my Fun Fact Friday videos. I hope y'all have a great Sunday. No, we didn't have a barn tour video today. I had a lot going on the last few days. Back to school, meet the teacher, uh, birthday party school shopping it's been wild to wild so i had to hold back on our old barn exploration but we'll get something lined up hopefully next sunday morning we'll be back out there in the cobwebs and the dust crawling around in the weeds with the snakes and the frogs i hope you have a great sunday happy sunday enjoy some family time today like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you ain't already. Tell your friends about me and share this stuff. Maybe a lot of people out there interested, need to learn, want to learn. I hope I can help somebody in some way. This is Justro at Metcalf Mills. I look forward to seeing you next time.